Hey there, fellows. So it's the 21st century. Technology is marching into the future. Here we have a wonderful little Lada that's lacking an engine. And we got this idea. Why not try electrifying this car? Making the propulsion system pure electric. Let's do this. We are going to be using rudimentary motors. Not of the expensive type with control modules and what have you. I think we should use motors of this sort. Install one of them per wheel. You can adjust the power settings. They also work in reverse. So the car will be able to move forward, backwards. And now it's all a matter of putting this together and seeing where this goes. Let's get to it. In order to transfer rotational motion to the wheels, we'll use front suspension components off of a front-wheel drive car. In order to preserve the factory steering components, I'm going to have to re-weld the steering arm, cut it off, flip it, and weld it back on in a lower position. So we've torn down the suspension and then rebuilt it. Everything is looking good, we've installed the wheels and all of that. And now we're going to be working on the propulsion system. You'd think it would be simple, but it's really not. The reason being that when the wheel turns, the axle shaft needs to change its length. And to avoid a situation where it would press up against the motor and break it, we need to set up a spline connection of this sort. I mean, that's what these are made for. This particular bit would be a component of the prop shaft. This is going to be moving back and forth. And it's gonna compensate for the wheel turning. Okay, let's piece all of this together and see how the system works. With all of the motors installed. Okay, let's carry on. As for how we got these hooked up, we've set up the drive mechanisms, and these motors require a 220-volt power source. There are four wires routed into each of these devices, from which we've gone ahead and removed the handles. We've also cut the wires, we have this cable right here. And at the moment, we are carefully routing the wiring inside the cabin. We'll have the remote for these back there, while these will reside in here. Okay, extend the wiring and carefully piece everything together. As for the control panel itself, I suggest we discuss that a tad later. As you can see, we got everything in place, it's all looking really good. With how we got the electric motors installed. We got the handles back on, but we've removed the buttons from them. You see, the thing is that we've uh, routed the wires from the actual motors straight into the cabin. 
They are situated right next to the controls. Inside the cabin I got this here control panel. I got four switches. Front right, back right, front left, back left. We'd better try this out. Can somebody power this up, please? Okay, let's see what happens. I'll push this down with my palm. Let me dial in some more. What if I up the power even further? What's going to happen? It drives! That would be the step that I have yet to conquer. Here we go! This is definitely a success. The car drives. Let's go! We are hauling! Stop, stop. The whole thing is rattling, but we are driving. Let's try two in reverse and two forward. We are backing up. Lovely. Okay, so I've made it this far. This calls for going through the garage and driving around on the street. Yeah, there we go. The car does not have a suspension, but hey. We are really moving. Here we go. I am shaking around with no suspension. But we are properly moving. I think that's enough. He got carried away. Uh, wait, what? Did something break? Why is it no longer moving? What do you mean it's out of range? Did they shut the power down? You're done. All good things come... And here I am thinking why it stop. It was going so well. So the car drives very well. But the thing with this sort of electric setup... It's not exactly a trolley bus, is it? One of those you'd hook up to the power lines and off you go. But in our case, we're restricted by the length of the cord. And as a result, the car does become immobilized at some point. But here's the kicker. Who's stopping us from carrying an autonomous power source with us? Yeah, this thing is slowly turning into a hybrid. Okay, so we've started the generator, and it is not quiet by any means. It being placed on the roof. Okay, here we go. We are off. Oh, I can hear the load on the generator increasing. But I am very much able to smoothly set off. Yeah, you can literally hear the generator loading up. We are traveling at 7, 8, 9 kilometers an hour, 10, 12, 15, there we go. Will we see 20 with this all-wheel drive system? Awesome. Twenty-four? Yeah, this thing properly goes. Good stuff. Okay, well, uh, so... Let's just call it 25 kilometers an hour. That was the top speed, which is pretty impressive. 
At the end of the day, the car drives and does so actually pretty well. The range is limited, though, because the power cord runs out at some point. But then it also drives well with a generator, though the generator does endure a bit of stress. I'd say what we've put together here can be called a hybrid. The fact of the matter is it drives well. We've kicked off an electrified lot of project here, which is quite nice. There now exists a moving prototype. You make sure to subscribe, maybe share your thoughts as to what sort of motors we could use in here to make this thing move even better than it already does. Okay, so the initial shakedown has been a success. That's it for this video. Watch us, subscribe. Catch you guys later.